Welcome to the YouTube Creators Hub podcast, where we help you conquer the internet one video at a time. We cover everything from how to start a YouTube channel to how to make a video go viral. And now, here's your host, the one and only Dusty Porter. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 341 of the YouTube Creators Hub podcast, where each and every Friday I review a wonderful YouTube creator. Uh, a couple of things before we get started today. Number one, I want to start and open with this. Um, if you follow me anywhere on social media or anywhere on the internet, you may already know this, especially if you listen to my other podcast. Uh, but my grandmother, uh, 94 years old, her name was Johnny Gowder, uh, passed away a couple of days ago. Um, myself and some family actually had the honor of being there. Um, My grandmother was very important to me. Um, If it wasn't for her, I probably would have never started my own business. I would never be doing what I'm doing, and I I would never have made any impact uh, in this space. And it's because of her and her business sense and her love and care for me that really put me uh, in a position to where I could do this uh, and felt comfortable and confident enough to do it. And so I called her Mimi. Uh, but uh, uh, Mimi, I really appreciate it. Uh, And this episode is in honor of her. Uh, So I did want to say that in the open. Uh, I did want you guys to know that. So uh, thank you for all of your thoughts and prayers and messages. It means a lot to me. Uh, And with that said, I do want to move on to the show now. Uh, We're brought to you today by the fine folks over at TubeBuddy, the one tool I recommend all YouTube creators try at least once. Uh, But also at patreon.com slash Dusty Porter, we have a mastermind group for YouTube creators. Right now there is a $5 entry over on the Patreon that will go up. Uh, Even if you join it now, you have two more months to get into that at the $5 tier. And then after that, uh, we have so many people wanting to be a part of that group that the price will go up. I will announce that when the time comes. But you don't only get access to the Mastermind group. You get access to our ever-growing Discord community where people are talking about YouTube and strategy literally 24-7. So definitely go over there, support us over there, uh, and we really would appreciate that. That link is in the description. And on a side note, I have opened up my YouTube coaching and consultation services. Uh, you can use uh, the link below to schedule a, an appointment, a paid appointment with me where I can you know, look over your YouTube channel, can answer any questions that you may have. It's not, in, it's not going to guarantee anything, uh, and we can set up a recurring coaching or we can set up a one-time consultation. Don't forget you can use our Google form if you think you or someone you know would be a great fit for the podcast. The main goal of this show has always been to help people either start grow, or monetize their YouTube channel, whether it be a hobby or a full-time aspiration. We are here to give you a behind-the-scenes look of what it looks like to be a successful YouTube creator. And I'm not talking about successful as far as how many subscribers or how many views, but successful in what you deem to be successful. Maybe that's more clients for your business. Maybe that's a viral video. Maybe it is subscribers. Maybe it is a certain amount of views or metrics in a day or a month. We are here to give you the look of what it takes by interviewing these wonderful creators. Uh, and it's just this show has grown and expanded so much. Just last week, we had over 43,000 downloads, which is tremendous. Uh, we had an episode a couple of months ago reach the 100,000 download mark, and it is because of you guys that are making that happen. We are building a wonderful, positive community over here. And if anything, just subscribe to the podcast. It's absolutely free of charge. Wherever you listen to your podcast, every single Friday, if you subscribe, you will get notified when we go live with a new interview. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into this week's conversation. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's conversation on the YouTube Creator Sub Podcast. Dusty here, as always, your host, and joined today from a wonderful creator. I'm joined today by Mark Taylor. Uh, Mark is from the Money with Mark YouTube channel and brand, uh, where he makes finances simple. He's all about working less and living more, using our money to enable our ideal lives, and he captures all of this and all the instructions and entertainment he has he puts over on his Money with Mark YouTube channel. Mark, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Dusty. Thanks for having me on. Very excited to be on the YouTube Creators Hub. I've been listening for a while, so 
I was very, very excited to actually come on to a podcast that I've been a longtime listener of. So thanks for having me. I love it. I love to hear that. I really do. It means a lot to me. Uh, But we are here today to talk about you and your content and kind of what you got going on on the Money with Mark YouTube channel. So if you would, uh, tell us the origin story or the beginning phases of the channel. How did the Money with Mark YouTube channel come to be? Yeah, I started my YouTube channel in 2019. I remember I was walking downtown with my ex-girlfriend, current wife, and I was telling her this idea I had for a YouTube channel. At the time, I was putting out a little bit of content on Instagram, talking about money, reviewing financial products up here in Canada where I'm from, and I was telling her, I said, I think I need to bring my content onto YouTube. That's where people are going to search for my content and to find content that is helpful and educational and informational. And I remember she turned to me and she's like, Mark, that is a horrible idea. Mm. And I kind of put this chip on my shoulder that I had it out and I've said, I'm going to prove her wrong. I'm going to show her that I can do this. And that was really when I started my YouTube channel. And at the time, I was working for a company that specialized in search engine optimization, one of the best in the world. But I hated my job and I hated my nine to five, Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday grind mainly because the company I was working for was pretty toxic. It was bad people. I didn't enjoy it, but I loved learning about search engine optimization, building websites. So I actually really loved the work I was doing, but just the actual people and the company I was involved in, I despised. And so at the time, I had already had a side hustle, which was taking on search engine optimization clients on in my free time. So I had one client that was paying me about $600 a month at that time. And I thought, what a great way to use that money to help launch one of my own brands, Money with Mark, and really talk about what I'm passionate about, which is learning about money, testing out financial products that we have, looking at financial strategies, and really just trying to help give particularly Canadians a lot of financial information that is what I felt was lacking on YouTube and just online in general. I know a big problem in Canada is that we're so closely tied into the States is that a lot of content is very much dedicated to the States, but there's some always some slight nuances that either those companies don't exist in Canada or they don't have the same product suite if available in Canada, or there's just different companies altogether that only serve Canadian customers. And when I was looking at the financial YouTuber space, obviously there's big names like Graham Stephan and Andre Jick, and they're really, and obviously Dave Ramsey too, but there really is not that same presence here in Canada for particularly Canadian content. And so that's where I felt like there was a gap and a real big opportunity for me to start my YouTube channel. So that was when I started and I've gone through a few different rebranding since I originally called my channel mediocre money because I didn't think I was particularly good at it but I wanted to bring people along with the ride and show them what I was learning and show them the products I was testing out I now call my channel money with mark and I started putting out about one video a week and so I started rolling to that into 2020 and then as we all know in 2020 I got fired from my job which I didn't think anyone expected usually everyone talks about 2020 and COVID coming But at the beginning of 2020, before COVID even came, I actually got fired from my full-time job. And so that came as like a really big shock to me. And so here I was going on unemployment and I had about up here in Canada, we have roughly 10 months of unemployment that we get. And it's not a full salary by any means, um, but because of the financial moves I had made beforehand, like house hacking, I had enabled myself to be able to live and not have to go out right away and find another job. And so I had about a 10 month runway. And so when I looked at this 10 month runway, I said, okay, I have my YouTube channel and my side hustle for search engine optimization for businesses. So I need to get at least one of these going enough to provide me a full time salary within 10 months. And to be honest, I thought it was gonna happen much, much quicker than I expected, especially because I started off by focusing really on the search engine optimization and doing that for businesses. So I started my company, which is my main company now called Make Your Mark Today. And that's where we provide search engine optimization to businesses all across the world. 
And that actually, I thought people were going to just jump at the bit and sign up right away, but it really took quite a long time for us to get clients. And so that was kind of a blessing in disguise because it enabled me to then also have the time to work on my YouTube channel. And so for that entire first year, when I was having time working on getting clients for my search engine optimization business, I was able to start creating YouTube videos and they were bad and they were so, so bad. But every week I put out my video, I filmed it on Friday, I would edit it on Saturday and then release it the very next week. And I did that over and over again. I tested out different lighting. I tested out different cameras. I tried filming with my iPhone. I tried filming with an old camera from a friend. And eventually I got to the place where I was like, I'm not really growing on YouTube. So I really needed to look at my YouTube channel and say, what am I doing here? Which what I kind of felt like at the time was wasting my time because I was getting very little views and I had very little subscribers. I think I had 80 at the time. And I took a hard look at my YouTube channel. I said, what am I doing putting out videos week after week? Now, in hindsight, that was a good thing because I needed to put out videos in order to work on getting better at videos, getting better at my thumbnails, mm. making my videos more catchier, mm. getting into the hooks quicker. But what really ended up happening was I looked at my videos and I said, I'm trying to go viral too much and I just don't know how to go viral. Or maybe it's my content. And to be honest, I still don't know how to go viral. But what I found was that the videos I made specifically for search and search optimized videos on YouTube or the search optimized videos I had on my website, I would make a YouTube video for it. And those videos I noticed were getting views day after day, week after week, month after month. And I would look at a video I filmed six months ago and it would have 15,000 views on it, 20,000 views, which isn't a ton, but it was enough where I was like, okay, I'm clearly onto something here. And so that's when I really started focusing my YouTube channel more on search optimized videos. And that's mainly the primary content that I make on my YouTube channel today. Okay, so we're going to talk about that, about the search content and how you're relating that and taking your experience from the SEO business into YouTube and vice versa, doing them, kind of crossing them over. And so with that being the case, you talked about early on your videos just stunk and all of ours do. Mine did. Some of mine still do. We're always trying to get better and trying to improve. And so with that being the case, what were some things that you did early on and some changes that you made that you've kept to this day that have helped you and really made a difference with your channel? I think the biggest thing is having that mindset of always trying to learn and get better. And the best way that you can do that as a creator is who are you spending your time around? We've all heard that saying where it's like, you are the accumulation of the five people that you spend the most time with. And we live all over the world, YouTube creators. And so how do you get to spend more time with those people? And so that's when I found podcasts like the YouTube Creators Hub. And I started listening to podcasts and all the different guests that you brought on. Some of the actual YouTubers I would get, then connect with later on on Instagram. And so that was really the biggest thing for me was having that attitude of always trying to learn. And I, I love Mr. Beast. His videos are obviously fantastic. Um, but, you know, there's only so much learnings that us smaller YouTubers can take from Mr. Beast because we can't all be a Mr. Beast. And at the end of the day, like his, his advice is make better videos. And we all want to make better videos, of course. Um, and so it was really trying to tap into learning and talking and just being exposed to other YouTubers like you interview Dusty and also just like reaching out to them and figuring out what they're doing. Uh, because really, the more you're thinking about YouTube, the more you're hearing other people's stories, you're just going to pick up little tidbits of ideas. Oh, maybe I'm going to try this with my thumbnails. Oh, maybe I should split test my headlines. Maybe I should fill out my YouTube description better. Maybe I can work on search optimized videos on my YouTube channel. And then that was really for me, I think one of the biggest things that helped not only encourage me, but also like really help those videos get better with every single video that I took. And I, I'm not in the photography space. I don't particularly care about video quality and, and photography lighting and stuff, but I ended up learning about it through people like Peter McKinnon and just other YouTubers uh, like the, I think, Premiere gal who's on YouTube who teaches you about editing in Premiere Pro 
And then I found things about, uh, I listened to a podcast that talked about Time Bolt, which is this really, really handy ap application that takes out all the space in your YouTube videos and allows you to just easily uh, delete the space and delete the little sections where you say, uh, um, uh, e, and you can just take that out right away instantly. Um, so just learning and finding out about all these things is not only going to make your videos better, but it, you can also find ways to optimize your time and be able to make more videos and get better at doing that. Yeah, I, I love that. Being willing to immerse yourself in the YouTube ecosystem is such a big thing and being able to not let it consume you because there's so many things to consume that it can get a little bit overwhelming. And understanding that you want to take the good bits, you want to learn, you want to get better, kind of like, you know, Mr. Beast, I, I get his point, you know, upload more, get better. It's, it's, it's all simplistic in the form of how they're presenting it, but there really is a lot more to it. And it really is about you putting yourself in front of the camera or in front of the microphone if you're podcasting or whatever it may be, and just going to town and seeing if you can start producing videos on a consistent basis and, and being able to start something like that is, is so, is so important. Um, so so we've talked about kind of the start of your channel. What kind of stuff, just briefly, do you cover on the Money With Mark YouTube channel? So right now, my primary content on Money With Mark is mainly financial reviews. So I look at fintech companies. I'll look at credit cards. I will look at uh, high interest savings accounts. And I'm finding all of these different products and, and diving into them. I actually test them out myself which really separates a lot of my content from some of the big brands and big players that are trying to make content uh, because I'm in there diving in, learning the pros, learning the cons about them, and then going and reporting on that in my YouTube channel. So that's the primary content that I make on my videos. The secondary content that I've been trying to make is videos that do have that potential to go viral. I already mentioned, I don't seem to be very good at making videos that go viral. And so now I'm changing that secondary content to really be more dedicated to my subscribers, those people who are interested in coming back, who are interested in me, quite frankly, in the way I like to learn about things in my journey. And so now I'm starting to shift that secondary content to really be a little more personal and really target those subscribers that want to just see more of you. And because they like the way you approach things or they like the way you explain things, or they just might like your personal journey with how you're struggling with money or the mistakes you make or the successes you have. And so that's that new secondary piece of content that's really coming out for me at the start of this year, really. And now let's talk about the production process. How has that evolved from when you've started until now? What does your production process look like now? My production process right now always starts off with keyword research, and that is finding searches that have consistent search volume on YouTube or on Google, and then going and making a video for that. And so there's kind of the two platforms, YouTube and Google. And now you, I might find a search where people are looking for like uh, Coho reviews. It's a fin fintech company up in Canada very popular search on YouTube and Google. That's great if I can find it popular on both platforms, but sometimes I'll find it that one search is popular on Google and not YouTube or vice versa, where a search is popular on YouTube, but not Google. No matter what, I'm making a video for that because what I've noticed is my main traffic source on my YouTube channel is from either YouTube search or Google search because what Google is trying to do on their side of things now is include a lot more YouTube videos in their search results because people just don't like to read and they skim through websites so quickly. The average time on page is less than 30 seconds on most web pages. But on my website, it's over, I believe it's over a minute and a half. So over three times longer than any other website that I'm competing against. And that's because I have my high quality YouTube video on my web page as well. And so that enables people to stay on my web page for longer, even if it's only a couple minutes. That's all you really need with your web page in order to get more traffic to your web page and your YouTube videos through Google. And so right now I start off with keyword research. And then from that, I start to develop the title and thumbnail. That's really where I'm trying to nail down and make sure that the title and thumbnail are working in correspondence with each other, because sometimes you want your thumbnail to not have as much text or you want it to be kind of 
intriguing or mysterious, but you need your title to complement it and describe what the video is really going to be about or vice versa. And so I really start working on that title and thumbnail next. Then what I do is I go over to my website, moneywithmark.ca, and I go and build a web page out that I'm trying to rank on Google. And the, what that does, that actually enables me to go through, write out my content. And I'm thinking about my YouTube video because all of my YouTube videos are then based on my web pages. So I write out my, my web page content. I usually have the same content structure for every single one of my web pages. So I'll have pros and cons, I'll have an intro, I'll have you know my favorite feature, my least favorite feature, areas I think that this product could improve on. And then I go and build out that complete page. And now I'm pretty much ready to film my YouTube video. I'll actually pull up my web page, and that's almost like my script in order to film my YouTube video. And so I'll sit there in front of my camera, do the actual filming process as I read off of my own web page, and then I'll go through editing. When I go through editing, I always start with Time Bolt. I find that it saves me so much time instead of like cutting and slicing out all the different areas you mess up in, it automatically takes out all the silence. And then it also allows you to have these small little clips in Premiere Pro or whatever editing software you're using. And you can just delete those out if they're not right. Or if you do multiple takes, just delete out the takes that you're not going to use. And then it, that really sped up my editing process. And from there on, I go and I upload the video to YouTube. I put in a full description that, again, is kind of based off my web page, but not exact. And then I'll have links in my YouTube video description to my web page. And then once my YouTube video is uploaded, I'll do the same thing. I'll embed my YouTube video on my web page and have links in my web page back to the YouTube channel as well. I love that. I love how detailed you were there. That shows that you're you know it, you know, up one side and down the other, and you've been working on it and evolving it as time progresses and, and time goes. And I just absolutely love that. You mentioned about you know a big part of your process is the website and creating an SEO. Um, relevant link there too. I do want to cover that because you have a beautiful website, um, which a lot of YouTube creators take for granted and they don't do. I do want to talk to you about the benefits of that. I do want to ask you briefly though, how has your experience in search engine optimization helped you on YouTube now that you're creating informational type content? So search engine optimization is a puzzle that involves over 200 puzzle pieces and we don't actually know what all of those puzzle pieces are. There's ranking factors, and those are what those puzzle pieces are. And at the end of the day, what Google and YouTube are looking for is it's looking for as clear of a picture as possible. So the more pieces to that puzzle you can put in place, the clearer of a picture Google and YouTube is going to have to know what your video is about or what, what your web page is about. And so that's kind of my experience with search engine optimization. Obviously, I do that for businesses and myself, uh, so I do have a lot of experience on it. It was great because I was never really trained or had any work experience in YouTube SEO because not a lot of people are really doing it, to be honest. But I did have a lot on the Google side. And so what I said was I realized that the software that I use, which is called Ahrefs, A-H-R-E-F-S, uh, they have YouTube as a platform. And so I could actually go in to uh, my, my software that I use and see the search volume on YouTube. And so when I realized that, I was like, oh, wait a second. I forgot that YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world next to Google. So of course, for my YouTube videos, I should try to do SEO on my YouTube videos. So that's really where I found out. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about YouTube having search volume. And so then I would start compiling lists of keywords, which means searches in my, my software for YouTube videos that I'm going to create in the future. And what's really nice too is that they always give you like suggested searches with my software as well that are also popular. And again, I'm always looking at the search volume and the search volume is measured in searches per month. I know a lot of people will talk about going to YouTube or Google and typing in whatever niche you're in, like home repair, HVAC or, you know, finance, and then just seeing what the suggested search results are. That's not a great way, in my opinion, to find popular searches for your videos or your web pages. I really want that to be backed up with data from an SEO software. So that's really where I come in with my SEO experience. And that's what I've applied with YouTube. And so I don't 
honestly, I don't have a lot of other people in the YouTube SEO community. There are some, uh, but YouTube SEO is relatively new because not many people either know about it or the big brands are getting so much value from the Google side of things that they're not really focused on YouTube at all. Uh, and so that's really where I've started to hone in my skill of YouTube SEO. And I've actually been honing it in so much that I've had creators reach out to me because they found me on YouTube. And now my marketing company through me, I actually offer consulting services with other creators. And we've been able to help other creators find searchable content to help them rank their videos as well. I love that. I want to now transition into the website thing. How important do you mm -hmm. think it is to have a linked website or a website where there are certain creators where I could get it if they're kind of behind on the website deal because of the type of content they have. But honestly, almost every type of content that I could think of on YouTube, a website would do nothing but help or promote. Um, you know, I remember when I launched my website, thinktutorial.com, I purchased it from someone else and I linked it up to my YouTube channel. You know, it didn't, I didn't see immediate intense, like monetary or numerical difference in, in the content, but I did see over time how it was beneficial because people would find me on the site and then go to my YouTube channel or go to the YouTube channel and find my site and it would keep them in my ecosystem longer and then if I do have products or services that I'm selling or if I do have a podcast which I do to promote they would find it so what have you found to be beneficial about having a very nice uh, easily uh, accessible uh, and easy to browse website yeah uh, so uh, listen I'm just going to say this right off the bat if you are thinking about targeting YouTube with search optimized videos, you have to have a website and you have to have a web page that matches the same search intent as your YouTube videos that are search optimized. It's a no brainer, you need it. Um, I'll give you a great example, which is my Money With Mark brand on YouTube. On Google, the finance space is one of the hardest to rank for for your web page because there's massive big financial conglomerates and banks and hedge fund companies that all have these big, huge websites that have been up for tens and tens and decades of years. And it, for the most part, like people in the SEO world think it's tapped out and no one really even makes websites in the financial space because it's so difficult to rank on Google for it. Well, here comes my little website that's only been going on for a couple of years now. And don't get me wrong, I really know how to build out a well, almost perfectly optimized web page. However, because of YouTube, and they're owned by the same company, if you, you're listening and you don't know this, YouTube and Google are owned by the same company, Alphabet. YouTube and Google are tied directly hand in hand, which is why Google is displaying YouTube videos within their search results. And so what I've noticed is that I have this, for the most part, very, very weak website because I haven't been in the financial space for tens of years. Um, but because I have that YouTube video and it's very well researched, unique content that is engaging, at least for a little bit, uh, I've noticed that both my YouTube videos and my web page are both seeing a tremendous uptick in views, subscribers, and website traffic as well. And so now I've actually seen that my website is ranking above these massive financial conglomerate websites on searches that I never thought were gonna be possible. And so it's kind of crazy to see this where if I was evaluating this for an SEO client that my uh, that Make Your Mark Today that we do as a team, I would say, listen, you're probably like, like 10 plus years away from ranking on page one for this. Um, but now I've seen with my own website, I'm like, wait a second, if you partner it with a search optimized YouTube video and they're both partnered hand in hand with the descriptions and you're embedding it in your web page, that your web page actually has a really, really big chance to rank on Google. Google as well. And so that's been pretty crazy to see. And once you start diving into it, maybe it's not that crazy because I go and I look at the other web pages that are in the financial space that are ranking on Google. They all are kind of regurgitating the same content and there's no videos, there's no interactive content on it. My web pages are some of the only web pages in the financial space that have a video that matches almost every single web page. And so when people come onto my website, it's just way more engaging of a website for them to be on. And Google has been rewarding me handedly for it. So to give you an example, I, I, we haven't talked about monetization yet, but the biggest way that I'm monetizing my YouTube channel and my brand money with Mark is with affiliate links. 
And my main revenue source from affiliate links is actually my web pages, mm. not my YouTube videos. And that's because Google is rewarding my web pages so much for having these unique videos on it. So you read my mind. I do want to transition into monetization because you mentioned affiliate marketing. And by the way, on what you just said about websites, I completely wholeheartedly agree. I think that, you know, I'm not saying you have to have one on launch of your website, but it needs to be going ahead and start to be planned out as to how you want it to uh, impact you. I mean, if you're a business trying to grow your business on YouTube, then a website is obviously a must have. If you are a vlogger trying to create entertainment content, a website is a must have because you can put those links of your partners. You can have another place where you can promote your video. You can have another place where you can sell your courses or whatever it may be. A website to me is a must have, especially with, with with Google and YouTube being linked with Alphabet, uh, even with people using other search engines, your website's going to show up. And by the way, you own the website, right? You own the URL because you'll buy the URL. You own the content you put on there. So if something were to happen to YouTube, you've got a fallback or a fail safe. I completely agree. Now, as we're, as we're kind of getting closer to the latter half of this interview, I want to talk now about monetization. You, you mentioned affiliate links. What are ways that you are making money directly with your YouTube channel? And what I mean by directly is obviously they're going to the affiliate links on the site, possibly from the YouTube channel and that kind of thing. Yeah, the way I make money with my YouTube channel is the biggest source is my affiliate links. Uh, and that's through links in a pinned comment, uh, links in my description. And I always will do a call to action, even a couple of them throughout the video in order to use my links as well. Uh, so that's the biggest amount of money that I have coming in. And that's grown substantially over the last year. I think uh, I was making maybe about 500 bucks a month a year ago. I'm making oh, just over $4,000 a month now from all of my affiliate links now. And for people who do check out my channel, you'll notice I don't have a ton of videos. And again, that's because I get those searches month over month, year over year. Uh, the second biggest source would probably be my actual search engine optimization skills. Uh, people are just going through and finding our marketing company and reaching out to me um, or reaching out to me directly through Instagram or on YouTube. And I'm actually, that's how I, my second biggest source is actually providing other creators with YouTube SEO coaching, if you will. Um, and then my third biggest source is AdSense revenue. And I know it's kind of weird because I know a lot of people on YouTube like, idolize the finance space because of the 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 cpm that you can get um and i do have a pretty high cpm but again if you look at my youtube channel i don't have you know billions of views on there um, but i have consistent views and i have some consistent growth in subscribers and that's been enough because i have that business end on the other side of it uh, like again what you said with the website when you can capture people's emails and then retarget them to your youtube videos or upsell them with products or services that you offer. Uh, that's really where I have felt the most value. And I think for a lot of creators that are at the uh, place that I'm at, which is like a relatively small creator, I think if you want to take this full time, you need to look at that monetization goals. And for the most part, most industries, you're, you can't just rely on AdSense in your niche. Uh, you need to look at what else can I provide to people who are interested in my YouTube channel. Uh, what sort of services, what sort of um, free downloadable packages, or if you're a video game channel, like what sort of like guides or like hack codes can you send to, to people? And you can sell them to people as well. Um, you don't need to just give away everything for, for free. Um, but obviously like giving away free things is a great way to collect people's emails and then have them upsell to products later on. Um, so that's really how my monetization breaks down. And then I guess there's kind of a third part as well. Because I've mainly been doing a lot of product reviews, I've actually had some of the companies that I've been reviewing reach out to me. And it's actually enabled me to land a couple brand deals where now I make some ad content for some of the brands that I've reviewed. And they actually pay me to create the short form video ads. And then they go and run the ads on TikTok and Instagram um, and even some on YouTube as well. So. That's kind of like a little third or I guess the fourth way that I've been able to monetize. And you can also get like a virtual assistant or do it yourself to go reach out to brands mm -hmm. that are in your industry and say, hey, like I have this YouTube channel, you know, I'm kind of respected in the space that your brand operates in. Um, I think it would be great and probably really resonate with your audience if you use me and I'll make video ads for you. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. What I love about what you just talked about is that you, you, all of your eggs are not in one basket. It's not just an AdSense or it's not just an affiliate marketing and being able to identify where you can monetize. You know, maybe you have a very popular brand or image and you can monetize merchandise. Merchandise or merch has never been something that I've been uh, able to kind of capitalize on. I'd love to in the future uh, have some YouTube creators have merch and, uh, you know, just go create video merchandise, you know, all this stuff I'd love to do. And it's out there for me if I'm willing to just go and grasp it. And I love hearing Mark talk about that. And you can tell you're a finance guy, Mark, by the way, because when you talk about that stuff, you, you, you can just tell that you just have had so much experience uh, in, in trying to figure out ways to capitalize and monetize the content. So, Mark, thank you so much for joining me today. Can you let my audience know where they can get in touch with you? Yeah, you guys can get in touch with me. I'm at Money with Mark on every single platform. Happy to reach out and chat with anyone if you guys have any questions. Um, or you can also reach out to my company if you're interested in anything SEO wise, which is makeyourmarktoday.ca. Um, and I think Dusty will have links in the description as well for the podcast. Yes, all of those pertinent links will be in the show notes as per usual. Mark, you were awesome today. Thank you for sharing all the nuggets and advice and strategies and uh, behind the scenes look of, of how to grow a channel, uh, how to monetize a channel, and just how to really integrate a website within a, a YouTube channel as well. It's been amazing to, to chat with you, and I look forward to doing it again sometime soon, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Dusty. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to the YouTube Creators Podcast. We want to thank you and invite you to subscribe to the show, as well as support us on Patreon for great perks, such as having your YouTube channel featured on the show and a link on our website. Until next time, keep uploading those videos.